We have one of the most unique keyboards. I think actually this is the most unique keyboard that's ever been in the studio. This is the Kinesis, well Kinesis Gaming they say, but it's the Kinesis Freestyle Edge. So Kinesis, if you're not familiar with the company, uh, they make very ergonomic, interesting keyboards. They usually separate them into left and right hand. And this one is a 10 keyless version, so it's got about the footprint of a 10 keyless keyboard. But the real benefit here, and what makes this a very interesting gaming keyboard, as they've given us a lot of macro keys over on the left. They've given us plenty of options as far as remapping everything. Uh, they've got lots of different modes. And if you're someone who uses Linux, they're not going to leave you out in the cold. You can do pretty much everything that you can do with the application uh, just with keyboard shortcuts and hotkeys. So you can reprogram, change the lighting, save macros, program macros, remap keys from one side of the keyboard to the other. So you can do a lot of different things with this keyboard. So if you're going to game, here's what really makes this kind of special. Just take the right side, which you don't really use that much while you're gaming, and just kind of put it aside over here. And bring this one over. And now you're gaming. Oh, this feels good. Oh, it just feels good. But normally you're so far apart, this is much more natural. Also, this is on a bit of an incline right now. You can get a lift kit and make it even higher. Yeah, check that out. Just like, ah, this is so, this is so comfortable. Guys, it's ridiculous how comfortable this is. So I can see why this was funded pretty quickly on Kickstarter. If you're a typist, well, you can get it in your favorite uh, Cherry MX keycap flavor. This is a, a brown right here. It's one of my favorites, but you can also get it in blue, red, and I don't know what else. Maybe clear fuchsia, marigold. That's really the main thing about this keyboard is just going to be the uh, the comfort level and also the fact that uh, you can remap keys very easily. So you want to use these eight uh, keys over here on the left, these eight programmable keys. Well, you can easily remap keys on the right side that you would normally be using if you're playing a, you know, overly complicated game like Divinity or uh, old school Deus Ex or something like that. You need extra keys. Well, you can remap them over here or you can just do this. Put this over here and for some of the keys you don't use as much, just like smack it real quick. I know it's kind of weird, but all right, let's talk about the actual um, fit, feel, and finish on this, guys. And then we'll uh, turn this thing around and give you not really a tutorial. If you guys want that, they've got one on their website showing you how to use all the different functions and stuff, but give you just a really good overview. So first off, the dimension of this, it's 1.25 inches tall by 15.5 inches wide by 10.25 deep. It can be 7.25 deep with, uh, without the uh, palm rest. So you see on the bottom here, got a couple palm rests and those are detachable. If you're gonna take off the lift kit first. So now the accessories we have on here, you, you need them. Like if you're gonna get this keyboard, you're gonna go all out, get the pads, buy the pads and also buy the lift kit if you're, I mean, I didn't think I was gonna like it that much because I like my keyboards to be kind of flat, but this is just really comfortable when gaming. It just, I almost like want a little lift kit for my mouse here so I could just have my hands in their natural position just hanging out like, ah. Build quality is really solid. Built like a tank, so I don't have any complaints there. In the back here, we have a few rubber feet all the way up and down. We got three there on this side, a couple or one in the middle right there, and then a spot where you can connect the, uh, the wrist rest on the back. Now, some of you guys may be saying, oh, that cable looks a little short. Well, that's uh, about 12 inches right there, but there's 20 inches in total. You can actually loosen this up and extend this if you want to, <clears throat> you know, maybe move it a little bit farther apart. And then, you know, you could set it up like this. You can set it up any way you want in your happy little world. All right, you know what I think we need to do? I think we need to turn this thing around and uh, show you guys what it can do. All right, guys, I'm going to try to go through a lot of the stuff on here. It's extremely complicated in my opinion. Well, not extremely complicated. Just there's a lot of stuff you can do. I'm not going to cover it all because there's tutorials for that, but I'm gonna give you an idea of what you can do when you get this. So of course you got your macro keys over here and your function button, when you press that, it's a toggle. So you hit it and then do your stuff up here. Uh, right here's your media keys, as you can see. Then moving on over, we got some interesting keys here. V drive speed, in, in key rollover, game mode, which will turn off your windows key uh, and reset. So I'll go through some of these real quick. So first off, um, status button. This will actually, if you have a text application open, it will print out the status uh, of all the different macros you have. It'll just tell you like how many macros you have, what your firmware is, uh, what modes you have activated, and that sort of thing. So that's pretty interesting. Then we have V-Drive here. Now internally you've got four megabytes of memory, and that's so you can store things internally right on, on the board. The software is stored internally. You can install it on your computer, but you can actually run the software directly from the V-Drive right here. So this will allow you to open that and close it. Be sure that you properly remove it when you, uh, I guess they're closing it down. That's what they say to do. Uh, speed here, that's for the speed of macros. They'll go up to 3,000 actions per second or as low as four actions per second. So you can change it there with that button. Uh, you can toggle your uh, in-key rollover on and off, and that'll be handy maybe for some older UEFIs who maybe can't function with it, or I don't, I'm not sure what other applications are for that, but game mode over here, 
It toggles off the Windows key so you don't accidentally press that. And then the reset button is going to help you reset this if you get it all convoluted and confuggled. Well, you can fix that up right there. So you can see we have um, the blue LEDs on there. There's your uh, LED. I don't know. All right, up here at the top, we've got our layouts. So you have layout number one. You can set up layout number two. And this is if you wanted to like remap keys from left to right or whatever. Um, and then you have layout number three, which illuminates both buttons. And then if you have more layouts, you can have up to uh, nine. Those will all be done in the software and none of these lights will be illuminated. So macro here, you can do macro, uh, you know, recording mode. And that, there's a tutorial on their website for that. You should go take a look if you're curious. Uh, remap will allow you to press the button, pick which button you want to remap and then remap it over here. So easy enough. So you use your smart set button with these different buttons here to activate those different modes. So that's what the smart set button is going to be up here. Open up your V drive here. It actually pops open on your computer. We've got the smart set app that you can run in Windows, but you also have access to, you know, seeing what your firmware is, layouts, all that kind of stuff here. Um, and you can come in and there's text files here. So I haven't really messed with any of these things yet, but you can come in and mess with these text files. Just make sure you save them before you close them. Let's check out the uh, smart set app. This is where you can come in and really program everything, uh, set up your macro speeds. It's just a really fast way to do everything you can do on the keyboard. Let's turn this, uh, Lighting down to breathe and about right there. There we go. That's that looks like fun. Also, I forgot to mention when you're setting up your your hotkeys and your macros and that sort of thing. Uh, if you want to set these up, uh, you can set them up with just a, a hotkey or whatever. You can program hotkeys. Uh, you can also program stuff with a modifier. You can use you know Control Shift Alt. Don't use the Windows key, but you've got six different modifier buttons that you can use to make more hotkeys and and that sort of thing. You get your remap functions over here. It's all presented pretty much on one page, but you guys can see. Uh, everything that's going on here. If you mess up with the macro, stop and start again because Backspace is actually recorded as something in the macro. It records everything you do. All right, next thing I want to show you guys, uh, save changes, yeah, let's make it breathe. So I got Notepad open right here, right? Now I'm gonna press Smart Set, Smart Set. I'm gonna press Smart Set and I'm gonna do status. And there we go. Tells me everything that's going on with the uh, keyboard. Really quick way to figure out what firmware you have how many macros you got, what, what, you know, if you're confused as to, hey, what layout am I on? It's all right here. Um, and again, there's a ton of stuff that you can do with this device. Yeah, it's almost overly complicated. I found myself sometimes being like, oh man, there's a learning curve on this thing. So that's one gripe I have with it. It's just really complicated, but at the same time, they're giving us the ability to do everything you guys are normally doing software right here on the keyboard. So that must've taken a lot of development. Uh, weird, strange, massive escape key. I guess that's okay over there, but I, they could have put one more key beside the escape key, right? I mean, if they're designing this thing from scratch and they have to get a mold, I really feel like they should have made a normal sized escape key and then put something else beside it. So you can have another macro key or who knows what, that would have been interesting there. Uh, the backlighting this just blue. It's uh, fine with me if you guys want RGB. Uh, sorry, the carnival is down the street. Uh, so when this thing first came out, I, I put it on Justin's desk because I was gonna be out of town. I was like, use this thing, play games. And um, his input. So Justin's input was that the function key took a little bit of time to get used to because it's a toggle. You press it once, then do your function and press it again to get out of function mode. And then as far as the typing goes, if you are a terrible typist, I kind of type in a weird way. Like my fingers hit random keys like that they're not supposed to hit at random times. So this took a little bit of time to get used to for me. If you're someone who uh, is just the Mavis Beacon master, you're gonna be the master of this thing right here. So really, this keyboard is for a specific person who really wants the ability to do this. So guys, I'll just reiterate, it's really comfortable. I do recommend it. I'm not sure if I'll use it as my daily driver or not, but we're gonna be uh, using this in the office for a lot of different things. So there you have it, the Kinesis Freestyle Edge. Let us know what you guys think in the comments. And uh, be sure to grab one of these t-shirts. This, this one was on the top of the pile today and it's kind of, goes with this. Dvorak you'll need to do with software. No switch for Dvorak on here. See you guys in the comments.